Right, so ESCOM's telling us that we're going to face load shedding this coming weekend. We're down to stage one, but it is still with us. But so then the news yesterday of a massive solar and battery storage project getting underway in the Northern Cape is welcome news. It's a small yet significant step that will see privately funded power plants keeping our grid electrified. The 16 billion rand deal involves Norwegian renewable company Skartec in partnership with local black economic empowerment partner H1 Holdings. It should start feeding power to the grid in less than a year and a half, we're told. Well, I'm joined now by Skartec Sub-Saharan African General Manager Jan Furi. Jan, thank you so much for your time. So, <laughs> it's what, about 150 Good megawatts evening. that are going to come to the grid, um, which is actually quite a lot of power. Um, and this is, I understand, one of the biggest solar plants, or going to be. Tell me more about the size of this power, power plant. Yeah, correct. I mean, it is 150 megawatts mm -hmm. of dispatchable renewables um, that's going to come to the grid. But for me, the story is really about the coming of age of renewables, where we are now showing that, that renewable energy is just as good as any other form of power generation. And um, so the whole intermittency argument uh, is, now, is now going away. The project is also, I mean, it covers a vast area uh, and, and the project site is about 10 kilometers across. So um, I think this, this is something of global scale that South Africa can be really proud of and hopefully paves the way for more of this to come based on renewables and dispatchable technology. How many solar panels are you putting up in total? Well, there's going to be more than a million solar panels for the 540 megawatts worth of, um, of generation that we will be, be putting up. So, I mean, to put that in perspective, a typical REAP project is um, 75 megawatts, and this is about six times the size size of a normal right. uh, project under the government's program. So this is really significant. So we, I know that a, that a town can be, I think, um, powered by about 200 megawatts of power. I, I originally thought it was 150 megawatts of power being generated, but you're saying it's actually 540 megawatts. Yeah, so that's, uh, I think th that's where the technical people would would, uh, would also want to know some of the details. So and normally renewables are what they call self-dispatching, meaning if the sun shines or the wind blows, the power goes to the grid. In this instance, uh, we are using batteries and solar together. And, and because the facility needs to be able to provide power on tap from uh, 5 o'clock in the morning until 9.30 at night um, in winter and summer, we needed to oversize the solar field so that even in those times when it's not daylight hours anymore or whether there's cloud cover, we are able to meet our obligations that's been set by government. Okay, so you're going to try and suck up as much sun as possible. Is that, is that it in layman's terms? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can you can look at it as the the solar field is effectively like the 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 water pouring into the batteries, which is equivalent to a large reservoir. Um, and we've we we've got more. We've got a lot of water, and we've got a big reservoir and a, a a smaller tap, you would say, at the end. So that irrespective of call it the the conditions, whenever the grid operator says open tap, there's power available to be fed into the grid. Um, and that's, that's always been the argument from, say, the fossil fuel lobbies against renewables, the whole argument around inter intermittency. But I think what we've now decisively proven to the world and to South Africa is that renewables is, is as good, and then you've got all the benefits mm -hmm. of it being green and not having to buy fuel for the next 20 years. So this intermittency argument is, is, is a big one, and I've heard it a lot of times. And basically what people say is, well, solar's fabulous, but when the sun goes down, uh, you can't light or heat your home. And then, of course, we know, but yes, there are batteries now. And then the counter-argument to that is they're prohibitively expensive. There's no way you could power your whole grid with solar. And let's face it, we're talking about 10 kilometers of solar panels that you're going to be putting up, right? Uh, and that's still going to give you, what, 150 megawatts or 500 megawatts, which is, I mean, our grid needs about 40,000, doesn't it? Yeah, correct. So I think, I mean, there's a couple of things in there. The one is if you just look at South Africa and the, the resource we have, both in terms of solar and wind, and only at the small percentage of ground coverage by renewables. I mean, we can do kind of tens of thousands of megawatts more. The grid needs to keep up with that. So firstly, we've got the resource to do it. Um, 
and now in a competitive auction against all other technology sources, including gas um, and everyone. It was a, in a te technology agnostic tender that we, that we won these projects. So on that basis, we showed that we can be cost competitive. Um, so yes, I mean, batteries uh, has, is, is on, in one level, people say it's expensive, but if you look at the cost curve over the last couple of years, batteries have become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Of late, there's been some disturbances because of um, some market dynamics and after the whole COVID story, but that will be, that will go away in the, in the medium term. Um, but my, my belief firmly is that a re renewable facilities, including wind, solar, and a combination of batteries, so hybrid power facilities, is really the way of the future, not just for South Africa, but particularly for South Africa, but also in other parts of the world that's blessed with a lot of natural resources. Mm. How, I mean, have you started putting up solar panels? Because you're saying quite confidently you're going to be feeding power into the grid within 15 months, is it? Exactly. So we are, the thing about renewables, it's, it's the modular nature thereof, I think Max is, is great. You don't have to wait 10 years for the likes of a Madupi or so to come, to come online. Um, so we've done this uh, in South Africa on six previous projects. So we've got a, a vast experience of delivering projects within South Africa and across, across the globe. Um, so we are, we've got people that's, that's on site already. We haven't started putting up the, the panels yet because just the way that you sequence it, you need to do the groundworks, drilling, piling, assembling of the trackers before you can actually start mounting um, the PV modules. What's typically on the, the critical path or the thing that takes the longest is actually building the grid interconnection, meaning the substation and the power lines that ties us into the Eskom grid. How many local jobs is it going to create? Well, so um, from during the construction period, it will be more than 2,000 jobs that will be created uh, within, the, within the communities around Uppington. So basically all of the labor is sourced from those, those areas, from the Kenart, Kaimus, Groblers, Wip, that the Zedefenkau district municipality. So all of the labor would be coming from there with some management and other technical skills coming from elsewhere. So there's going to be a massive job creation there. And then one also needs to look at the, both the direct and the indirect spin-offs for the communities in terms of the food sales, vehicles. I mean, for example, where there's a Vodacom tower that's going up because we need connectivity, where previously there was, this, there was basically no signal in the area. So I think both the direct and indirect benefits would be of kind of great significance, not just for, for the um, Kenart area, but for the Northern Cape province as a whole. Who is paying for this deal uh, and how do they get their money back? Now, I think that's the best part of it. So being South African and being a taxpayer as well, um, you will only, South Africa will only be paying once the project starts delivering electricity to the grid. So the project is funded by both debt and equity, the equity coming from ourselves and H1 Holdings. So we're the investors into the project. And then the rest we're getting from a consortium of banks, uh, including Standard Bank, that was the, the lead arranger, and then um, BII, which is the, the British DFI putting debt into the project. And the way that we recoup our investment is by entering into the power purchase agreement that we signed with Eskom on the 2nd of June. So then they will be paying us for the power delivered, but only for power delivered. So if we are late or anything like that, the taxpayer doesn't pay. That is on the private investors. I think that's the beauty of this model uh, for South Africa. Are you, are you getting paid for the power you deliver at the current rate or are you charging more? No, so we were awarded at a at a specific tariff. Is it and higher? that tariff then is, it is than in the, the power purchase? Um, so in the well, I, I guess it depends what you what you call the usual. Whether well, I mean, the current um, rates. There's, but, a, but, but there's mega flex, are the rates? Yeah, no, I just want to know. I mean, I suppose the question I'm ultimately trying to ask you is if we go crazy with solar and battery and it looks amazing, does it ultimately mean yes. that our electricity is going to go up for the consumer who's already overburdened? No, the, the price for the consumer is not going to go up. And I think an important distinction to put here is the investment that we're making now and that goes into these projects. They're high capex projects, meaning there's a lot of upfront money to be invested. But because no fuel needs to be procured over the life of the project, whether that's gas or coal, 
Um, and, and these are international commodities that's, that's typically priced in dollars. So what we've seen of late is lots of volatility in, in the commodity and in the currency markets. And those risks are typically passed on to government if you, if you buy power from these sources, where you know for the next 20 years, the price of the power is going to be stable and it's only going to escalate by CPI. So one can plan around that. It's not this year it's 5%, next year it's 20%. I think there's a, the predictability around the solution like we've put on the table, I think is, is of great value to government because you can actually do long-term planning. Yeah, so there's no hidden cost. So it's a sudden escalation in the price of gas or fuel or whatever, and suddenly you're stuck uh, in a difficult situation. It sounds fantastic. Let's hope it becomes a real star uh, for us in helping us get out of load shedding. I'll let you get back to the Northern Cape and all the work that has to happen in the next 15 months. Thank you so much for chatting to us this evening. Do appreciate it. That was Skartex uh, General Manager for Southern Africa, Jan Furi.